Hello, this is Medard Gable of the Global Solutions Lab. I am here to talk to you about design and what it is, who does it, how it works, what it is generically, what it is specifically, also about design science and what it is and how it can change the world, both in the context of the Global Solutions Lab. What I'm gonna be talking about today is part one, design 101. This will be followed by part two, the design science methodology. So to begin, what is design? Design is everything, whether it is subatomic particles, atoms, cells, organisms, uh, societies, the biosphere, ecology, the cosmos, um, everything from families and trees and waterfalls to bridges to art, everything, even your thoughts, uh, imagination or designs. So what does this mean? It means you're a designer. Everybody's a designer. Whether you like it, know it or not, you're a designer. What did you design today? Well, you, you're here. You, you made a choice to be uh, present for this talk. That's a part of a design, a design for your life. Um, you got up out of bed today. You know, the problems that you solve, do I get up or not? What do I eat for breakfast? What do I wear? Your clothes are a design. Your lifestyle is a design. Every, all the choices you make are part of a, a uh, design for you and your life. So you're a designer. So what is design in a most generic sense? Design is information that organizes and structures matter and energy, giving it form, shape, and function. So what is human design? Well, when we design something, it's a set of choices that we make, that it's informed by our values, our vision, our experience and knowledge. And it's structured by the resources you have access to to achieve a desired preferred state. So design is what we do to the world. Design is what we do with the world. Design is how we solve problems and achieve a desired outcome. Design changes the world. Design is the creative process of bringing something into the world where we add information and intention to matter and energy. Design is the process of creating something from the resources we have access to. Design is where values and vision are added to experience to change the world. Okay, segueing from design as a generic process in existence and the evolution of, of the cosmos um, to design science, an activity that human beings employ to change their world. Uh, what is it and what is its methodology? It's the specifics of that methodology we'll be going into in part two of this talk. But right now, in a general sense, design science is a methodology for creating desired futures. It is a methodology for recognizing, defining, and solving complex problems. It is a way of changing the world in preferred directions that is based on innovation. It does more with less, builds resilience, and thrives on collaboration. Okay, design science is a perspective, a set of values, a methodology. It's a strategic design and planning process. We'll go through all of those as we go forward in this talk. So a perspective. Perspective is more important than IQ. Nicholas Negroponte said that. He was the head of MIT's Media Lab. And what the heck does that mean? Well, how we look is more important than what we look at that our perspective is really a function of our values. It's determined by our values. What we look at uh, and where we're standing when we look at it is, is more important than IQ. A specific example. So you're a very smart, brilliant human being. You're looking at a tree. You're standing two inches from it. So the only thing you can see is the bark. It might tell you some interesting things, but it won't tell you much. So you stand back, get a little bit bigger perspective, and maybe you can see, you know, that it's a round cylindrical structure that goes up 
reaches towards the sky might have some branches, some leaves. You back up further, you can see the whole tree and its beauty, its majesty. It's also whether it's healthy or not, whether it's spring, summer, fall. You back up further, you can see the tree is part of a forest. You back up further, you can see that that forest is part of an ecosystem, a watershed, a biome. You stand back further and you can see that it's part of a uh, whole system of uh, the environment, the biosphere. You stand back further and you can see that it's also part of an economy. Uh, it's, there might be somebody out there or some organization, corporation who wants to buy that land, the forest, and turned into a shopping mall or, or parking lot, you stand back further and you can see the energy source for that tree. You can see this, the sun and how the flow of energy through the leaves, through chlorophyll, uh, turns that tree into a living system. So perspective is more important than IQ. The formulation of the problem is often more essential than its solution, according to the way Albert Einstein and his perspective sees things. So um, moving forward, we say design science perspective, it's the big picture, whole systems, long range, it's global and it's all of humanity. That's the perspective it has on the problems that we face. Design science uses a set of tools to gain perspective, to see the big picture, the whole system, the long range, the whole world. What, we, what, what I would like to call is a macroscope. You know, microscope allows us to see what's too small. Telescope allows us to see what is too far away. The macroscope allows us to see networks, relationships, systems, interconnections. It's also design science, a set of values, in addition to being a perspective. One way of expressing some of those values is, is the quote by Buckminster Fuller, we're not going to be able to operate our spaceship or successfully, nor for much longer, and thus we see it as a whole spaceship and our fate is common. It has to be everybody or nobody. Everybody or nobody is a fundamental value of the design science perspective. It also, how do you make the world work for everybody? all of humanity in the shortest possible time with the least amount of resources and ecological impact through spontaneous cooperation without the disadvantage of anybody. More values. Design science values life, human life, children, integrity, justice, equity, increasing degrees of freedom, ever increasing efficiency, transparency, and love. It's not trying to solve the problems of the world through some autocratic dictatorship that dictates, you know, here's what we're all gonna do. This is the solution to our problem. But it's more interested in the spontaneous cooperation of creative solutions where everybody is in on developing the solution as well as implementing it. Okay, it's a perspective, it's a set of values, it's a methodology. And the methodology is, is design and science applied to the solving real world basic human need problems. And it, it's how we solve problems in a systematic way using the discoveries of science and applying them to our everyday problems. It's how we solve basic human need problems. It's a strategic design and planning process that is, the, that is comprehensive and anticipatory application of the principles of science to the creative design of solutions to the problems of society and the fulfillment of it and our potential. So it's not just solving the problem, it's, it's trying to increase the capacity, uh, the ability of society and of individual human beings to, to fulfill their potential. Design sciences where vision, values, critical thinking, creative imagination combine with a global whole systems perspective and a problem solving and strategic planning methodology that leads to informed, effective action for changing the world, changing the world in preferred directions, dictated by our values and vision, what we think is important. It's action for changing the world. Action starts as a value that leads to an intention that becomes a design. Design can be a physical or metaphysical entity or artifact. What do we mean by that? Well, it can be a physical thing like you know, a, a smartphone, a computer, an internet 
network. It can be, you know, an automobile, a ship, a boat, a plane, a drone, a submarine. It can be any number of things, uh, you know, a tractor, a way of growing food, a hydroponic farm. It can be any number of physical uh, artifacts, but it can also be what I'm calling, <clears throat> referring to as a metaphysical entity, as a <clears throat> an organization, a way, <clears throat> excuse me, of of uh, organizing our resources, distributing our resources. It can be a creative scheme for um, for creating abundance rather than scarcity, rather than um, just a physical thing. It can be a way of organizing the physical universe. It can be a policy, a program, a plan, or organization. It can be a and it's physical artifact or in its strategy for the implementation. Once you've got something, how do you get it done? How do you scale it? How do you get it out there to the world so it impacts the world at the scale you want it to impact and that the world needs? So who does design? Who should do design? Well, the answer is the same thing about who does design. Uh, in the beginning, it says you. You know, you're the one, just as war is too important to be left to generals and politicians, making the world work for everyone is too important to be left to politicians, corporate executives, bureaucracy, or chance. Making the world a better place is all of our responsibilities, not just <clears throat> somebody who is the expert or we think is the authority or who has either self-appointed themselves or think they've got the uh, wherewithal to make uh, the changes they deem important. You don't have to be a powerful government, large corporation, or billionaire to practice design science and to make a difference out there. So who does it? It's you, citizen science, which is, a, which is what design science is, is a part of, is, has a long tradition of doing responsible, valuable research for the greater good. You don't need a PhD to pay attention to your values and vision of what is important and do something about it. <clears throat> citizen science has been around for a long time and has been working diligently on everything from, you know, butterfly migrations and birds to earthquake uh, monitoring uh, throughout the world. It's, it's a way of involving everybody, not just um, the <clears throat> formally trained scientists in making the world a better place or learning more about the world. So who does it? Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed, people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. That's what Margaret Mead has to say about it. We are called to be architects of the future, not its victims, is what Fuller has to say <clears throat> about it. So um, we, don't, we didn't know what we couldn't do, so we did it. Again, um, more uh, examples of people who are uh, don't listen to the experts, oh, we can't do that, or we can't afford it, or it's not politically feasible. They just go out <clears throat> and do it. They create it uh, and make it a reality. The young do not know enough to be prudent, and therefore they attempt the impossible and achieve it generation after generation, Pearl Buck. Now, you have the values, vision, time, energy, skills to intervene so that you are not a victim in the future, but its architect. The idea that solutions can come from anywhere and from people with seemingly unrelated work is another key to changing the world. A uh, study that was done fairly recently said that the further the problem was from the solver's expertise, the more likely they were to solve it, often by applying specialized knowledge or instruments developed for another purpose. For example, Steve Jobs on the smartphone. He didn't have a degree in telephone design, didn't work for AT&T or T-Mobile or anybody else. Uh, he was somebody who wanted to uh, develop a artifact that would solve a series of problems. He didn't have the expertise and he didn't, more importantly, allow that lack of a PhD or being then a uh, very wealthy person or have corporate backing to uh, stop him. Same thing with Elon Musk and Henry Ford and dozens, hundreds, thousands of others, inventors, innovators who have developed solutions to our problems. Design Science Lab, moving from design to design science to design science lab, is a laboratory for the development of desired futures. 
we want to think big and why we are here. Um, the reason we're here, the future is not some place we are going, but what one we are creating, the paths are not to be found, but made. And the activity of making them changes both the maker and their destination, John Shar. Design science is a methodology for creating desired futures. In summary, all of in summary of almost everything we've been saying so far, design science is a methodology for recognizing, defining, and solving complex problems. It's inspired by and based on the work of Buckminster Fuller and other planners, scientists, and visionaries. It takes a whole systems, global and anticipatory approach that fosters creative collaboration and synergy in the development of comprehensive solutions to societal problems. Design science is the comprehensive and anticipatory application of the principles of science to the creative design of solutions to the problems of society. It's a way of changing the world in preferred directions that is based on innovation, does more with less, builds resilience, and thrives on transparency. Design science is the, the core of this approach to problem solving and planning is a concern with whole systems, the whole earth, the entire history of the planet, the global economy, all of technology, and all of humanity, both those living now and those yet to be born as well as a recognition that everything is implemented locally, and that the whole is merely the context for the local. It's a local upon which the success or failure of a particular design solution will thrive or die. Every new design needs a prototype, a place where it's tested, bugs are worked out, and then it can, after that, if it, it gets through that stage, it can then be scaled to impact the entire world. The challenge, how can we do the most good for the greatest number with the resources we have? Bill Gates. Design science is a means of vastly increasing the resources we have by doing more with less through the application of science to the problems of the world. Doing more with less is not magic. It's a substitution of information for materials and energy. It's using creativity and know-how instead of brute power and materials. The challenge, how do you make the world work for everybody? All of humanity, not just the four or 5% in North America or the 20% in China and East Asia. How do you do that in the shortest possible time? Not in the next decade or the next century, but now with the least amount of resources and ecological impact without the disadvantage of anyone and through spontaneous cooperation. Again, Buckminster Fuller and his perspective and values. More specifically, what is the methodology of design science? We'll get more into this as we go forward, especially in part two of the presentation. The core of that approach is you. And what is the most important problem facing the world? Your answer to that, not mine, not some experts, not a politician or a billionaire's, but your, what is the most important problem facing the world? The Global Solutions Lab will use design, design science, and bring in people from around the world with different skills, knowledge, experiences, and in collaborative uh, design science, develop solutions to real world problems, starting with what is the most important problem facing the world? And how do we determine important? How do you determine it? What problem, if solved, will improve the lives of the most people? Is that what you're thinking? Or what problem, if solved, will solve the most other problems? Or what problem do you feel most passionate about? Or all of the above? There are many ways of determining what is important, and it's up to you. It's got to be based on your passion, your experience, what you think is critical and important. All right, having said all of that, uh, which was a, a lot in a short period of time, um, you can get this book, it's free. You can get it, uh, download a PDF at this place, designsciencelab.com slash resources. Um, you can also buy it at Amazon, get a hard copy or a paperback version of it, but um, this will help uh, explain, go into detail on all of the preceding, as well as 
mostly, uh, in fact, go into uh, details on the design science methodology. That's what we're going to be covering in the second part of this. But to give you an idea of what it's about, I'm going to race through it, give you some uh, uh, idea, overview of it, and then we'll go into the details in a much slower way uh, in the next session. So introduction to design science and its planning process. This is a good introduction to design science. Again, another quote from Fuller, humanity teeters on the threshold of revolution. It has to be success for all or none. If the revolution is a bloody one, as in all previous revolutions, humanity is through. The alternative is a design science revolution. So the design science planning process, the overview of it, you know, what's the most important problem? You know, Pick that. What are its symptoms? What are the causes of the system? What is the system or structure that contains the symptoms and causes? And then what are some actions that will that will uh, deal with it? And then what is the preferred state? You know, where, what do you want to achieve and what actions will move you from the problem state to the preferred state? And this is some more details, the planning process, um, you know, that goes on, choose the problem, the preferred state, the problems, and then the present state and measure it, you know, all of these things are going to be going into detail, what is the preferred state, which is the critical part of what we're doing, and uh, what alternatives, artifacts, implementation, and what is a compelling design and plan. Um, that's pretty much where we're going to wind up this session. Basically, you're the designer and design the world you wanna live in. And uh, we'll be asking and answering questions in the future. Uh, thank you for the designs you will do. Again, this document, in case you wanna go into details. Thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you in the lab or uh, elsewhere.